As always, if you haven't already done so, just make sure you pause the video and try the question first on your own before listening on. We are asked to sketch a region enclosed by these two curves and then find the area that is formed by these two curves. And we've illustrated three steps that we can follow in order to obtain the area of this region. And in step one, we can see that we're going to set the expressions equal and solve for x. So in this problem, our expressions are y equals x squared and y equals 4x minus x squared. So we're going to want to set those equal to each other. And now we're going to be solving for x. We have a quadratic equation. It's a quadratic equation because we have x raised to the power of 2 as the highest exponent. With quadratic equations, generally you want to set them equal to 0 in order to solve for x. So we're going to add x squared over to both sides. So the left side will give us 2x squared equals 4x. And then we're going to subtract 4x on both sides. And again, we will see that this gets the equation equal to 0. So we'll have 2x squared minus 4x on the left, and then on the right we have 0. Then after getting the equation equal to 0, we're going to want to factor this. So we can see that we have a greatest common factor between these two terms of 2x. So we'll factor out a 2x. This will leave us in parentheses with x minus 2. And then once we've factored it, we want to set each of the factors equal to 0. And then we'll solve each equation for x. So in this case, we'll divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 0. In this case, we'll add 2 to both sides, and we'll get x equals 2. So our region will lie between these two values of x, x equals 0 and x equals 2. So that completes step 1 of this problem. We can see in step 2, we are going to graph each curve between these values of x. So let's begin to set up a graph between these two values of x. We can, of course, sketch a y and an x axis. We're going to be graphing between x equals 0. And just to spread it out a little here, we'll go four boxes over to x equals 2. Now, our two functions, recall, were y equals x squared and y equals, was it 4x minus x squared? It was 4x minus x squared. Now, what I like to do is I like to plug in some values to show me what the graph looks like. So why don't we color this curve in red so we can kind of monitor it. And I'm just going to be plugging 0 in for x here. So I would have y equals 0 squared, which of course would give me 0. So we would have the point 0 comma 0 here. I will then plug 1 in as well. So y equals 1 squared, which is 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when x equals 1, y also equals 1. Maybe we'll just count by two boxes here. So we'll have a point right there. And finally, when y is, uh, excuse me, when x is equal to 2, we can see that y is equal to 4. So we'll have a third point way up here. So this particular curve, which is a nice parabola, would look something like that. And then I will use a different color for the next one. Maybe we'll call this one green. We'll plug in the same values of x. So we'll start with 0. So we're going to have 4 times 0 minus 0 squared. All of that is equal to 0. So the green point also sits at 0, 0. We'll plug 1 in. So we'll have 4 times 1 minus 1 squared. When we simplify that, we should get 3. So 1 comma 3. And then finally, we're going to plug 2 in. And we'll have 4 times 2 minus 2 squared, which will give us 4. So that point lies at 2 comma 4. We connect this. This is also a parabola, but it's sort of an upside down parabola. And we can see that when we draw these graphs, we get a nice region that lies between the two graphs. And it is our goal to find the area of this sort of teardrop shaped region. So that's going to bring us to the third step, which we can see above here. And it says that the area between these curves will equal an integral from a to b 
f of x minus g of x. Now, keep in mind that little a right here is just the lower x value of where the curves intersect. So that's actually going to be 0 in our case. And then the little b up there, that is the upper x value of where the curves intersect. And that's going to be this point up here. Notice the x value, if you kind of drop straight down here, is actually 2. So that's our b. And then we have f of x minus g of x. I find it useful for f of x minus g of x to realize that f of x is going to be your function that lies on top. And then g of x will be your function that lies on bottom. And you'll notice that the top function was the function that we colored in green. That was the y equals 4x minus x squared. And then the bottom function is the one that we colored in red. And that's just y equals x squared. So putting this all together into the formula, we're going to have the area of this region is equal to the integral from 0 to 2. And then we have our f of x, which we've said was 4x minus x squared. And then we're going to subtract that by g of x, which again is x squared. And that will complete the setup of the integral. But of course, now we actually have to do the calculus here. And before integrating, it's a good idea to simplify. So we have a minus x squared and another minus x squared. So we're going to make that a minus 2x squared. And now we are ready to integrate. Now recall for this problem that the integrals will follow simple power rules. So here's one way to represent the power rule. If you have the integral of a constant and then x raised to a power, that's basically going to equal the constant x raised to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So following that rule along, we're going to have, in the first term, 4x raised to the power of 2 over 2 minus 2x raised to the power of 3 over 3. And this will be evaluated from a lower bound of 0 to an upper bound of 2. Why don't we simplify this a tad? 4x squared divided by 2, of course, is just 2x squared minus 2x cubed over 3, and then evaluate it from 0 to 2. So when you evaluate the integral, of course, you're going to be plugging the upper bound in first. So we're going to be plugging 2 in to the expression first. So we'll have 2 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 cubed over 3. We close that off. And then you're going to plug in the lower bound. And in this case, the lower bound is 0. Remember that when you put the bounds in, you also have to subtract the values that you obtain. So we're going to put a minus sign here, and then we're going to plug 0 in. Now you should note that it's all going to 0 out, because you're going to have 2 times 0 squared. Let me move this over. Minus 2 times 0 cubed, all over 3. All of this will equal 0. So we can actually ignore this term and just focus on simplifying this. So we'll square the 2 to make 4, then multiply by 2 to make 8. We'll cube the 2 to make 8 times 2 is 16, but then that's over 3. And then to finish this off, why don't we look for a common denominator? We can call this 24 over 3 minus 16 over 3. And then when we finish this off, we're going to end up with 8 thirds. So 8 thirds will be the exact area of the region that lies between those two curves.